The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not say a word in answer to her. His disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did him homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Yeah, it's it's a great little exchange we uh, we have here in the Gospels. It it um, yeah it shows us and it shows us any number of things. Um, it's it's remarkable for us, of course. You know, I have to say it probably every time we hear this gospel passage. It's remarkable for us that to hear Jesus refer to this woman, a non-Jew, as a dog. He doesn't do it. He doesn't do it directly. Okay, I don't want to soften the ed- I don't want to soften the edge, but. He doesn't do it directly, but it's this kind of Jews and non-Jews thing. In fact, it's, it sets us up quite um, remarkably to see what the, the, uh, the very specific delineation of, of Jesus' ministry, what, he's, he, what he is there to not do and so to do. And so, let me say, Jesus', is, Jesus is mission, his ministry is to Israel. It's to Israel. Because he, he's fulfilling the promise of God. And the promise of God is, okay, sure, the promise of God extends to the world, but it extends to the world through Israel. That's, it, that's God's plan. So when Jesus, when, when Jesus comes in fulfillment to the promises of God, he's there to re-enliven Israel. And, he, and we see it throughout the scriptures. He has, he has that, say, the, that dedication of, of, of mind and heart, that single-mindedness. He's there to restore God's Israel project. And we say... I can, I can kind of break that open a little bit and say what we see in Jesus is a new Israel project, right? He gathers the 12, the 12 tribes of Israel. He's, he, he's clearly the Messiah. He's the, he's the king of the Jews. And so this is, a, this is a, like a revitalized Israel project that he is building around himself. Um, but, we, but we see that it's, a, I mean, Israel is still in the name. Do you know, even say new Israel project. It's, it's, a, it's an Israel project. And this is, this is what... Um, God intends to have happened, the renewal, the restoration of Israel in order to bring his blessing to the world. He's focused on the Jews. And so when this, this woman comes who is a non-Jew, this, fa- this just falls outside of the parameters of his, of his mission. I would say, is, are we uncomfortable with that? Can, can, you're very uncomfortable with that? Okay, that's, I'm, no, I'm okay with that. Because I'm, I'm happy, I guess, I say again, with Martha, I'm very happy to receive the feedback. I need the feedback. No. Yeah, it's, no, okay, fine. No, it's good. It's good. I'm, a, I'm, I'm less, no, I'm, I'm more at ease with it probably than you are. But I understand why we're not at ease with that because we think of Jesus as, it's for everybody. And that's true, right? Is that the problem? There's some other problem in there? Yeah, yeah. No, I don't know. I don't. I want to know because I want to. I want to address what the problem is. But I. I think that it's. I think it's likely because we see Jesus as being like uh, universally important, and we should because he is. But in his time, right before his death and resurrection, the mission is like like a laser beam on the house of Israel. Again, to to fulfill the promise of God. But we see in a couple different ways because already in in the gospel he's remarked on the centurion's faith. Centurion was not, was not a Jew. And now here, even here, a woman, oh, great is your faith. Great is your faith. Let it be done. And it's done. So there's, there's already this happening. And what is it? It's like the breaking in of God's promised future into the present, which I think is very instructive for us. But because, in fact, the woman gets it right. She, 
the woman gives the woman gives the mechanism before anybody else does, right? She says, "Okay, well, fine. Yes, yeah, okay. I'm a dog. I'll eat the scraps off of the table, right?" So, the idea is, of course, that blessing will come to life, uh, will will come to the rest of the world through Israel. So, yeah, feed the children, feed the children, and then the overflow of the feeding of the children is the feeding of the world. Yeah, it's not exact. You know, it's not exactly. Right, but it's close. I mean, it's it's close enough. She gets it. She gets it. Okay, yeah, sure. Feed the children first. I understand that, but also feed the dogs. Yeah, I know because I know you. I know you want to. I know you know you. I know you're going to feed the dogs. Do it now. Right, so she, and how she how she perseveres there with her view of what God's promised future is, and how she drives on God to make it a present reality. That's faith. That's faith. She knows who God is. She, I mean, and of course, the disciples, right, they're still coming to terms with Jesus being the, the Messiah. They're still growing into that. And what's, I mean, how does she call out to him right at the beginning? Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. She's got, the, she's got his Messiahship down already. I how remarkable that is. And again, it's, it's, okay, so let me see had someone put it in a very neat little way, something like this. Jesus and the disciples are, are like, they're not, they're, they're not yet ready for Calvary, right? They're, they're not yet ready for Jesus' death. She's, already, she's ready for Easter. Because the Easter, the Easter proclamation then is this, the restoration of, of Israel, bringing God's blessing to life for the world. It's, it's now happening. And now Jesus' disciples have to, have to take up in themselves the new Israel movement and they have to bring God's blessing to life in the world, the, the, the entire world. He sends them out, right, with, with his power and strength and the rest. He sends them out into the world to bring God's blessing to life in the entire world. So she's ready for that moment. It's an Easter moment. But Easter comes about through the death and resurrection, and they're not yet, they, they haven't yet come to terms with what that, what, what that means. So anyway, this is it. So this is it. I don't know. Is there anything more to say here? There is a lot more to say here, but I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say a lot, but what I say is this. She, this woman, this, um, this Canaanite woman has to be uh, an example for us as well. And there are any number of, any number of ways to, to think of her as an example, including her, her faith that does not back down, right? Her her seeking out Jesus, her, her um, assent to the reality that Jesus does in fact have all power and authority and what, what he wills will be done, right? So all this, all this stuff, in our, in our prayer, are we that bold? Are we that insistent? Do we persevere in the way that she did? She, I mean, she, this is like, what I, I mean, I love it because there's like banter here, right? There's banter with Jesus. Do we have any banter in our prayer? Don't make your prayer so boring, do you know? Like, bring yourself into it. Bring, put yourself into it. I remember having just, I've had all kind of crazy discussions with Jesus about all manner of things. Do you know, and he, he doesn't cease to su- surprise me with his little, all right, are you done with that yet? You know, like, Let's do it. Can, we, can we move on to something else now? You know, it's like, okay, so wh- where, where are we in prayer? We've got to enter into dialogue, true dialogue with Jesus, and the dialogue might surprise us. The other is this, though, this, and this is why I want to leave, is she, she is anticipating God's promised future, right? She has some view of what it means that Jesus is king of the Jews and what that means for the wider world. What about us? We, we, we honor Jesus as, as the Messiah, as the king, not just the king of the Jews, the Lord of all nations, the rightful ruler of every human heart, the rightful ruler of my heart. Right, so what, what is his, what is God's promised future now? Like what is, what do, what do we anticipate the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God will bring to life when, when at last it's firmly and finally installed, implemented, right? Not just inaugurated and, and in process, but when it's firmly and finally installed. What do we, what, what will it look like? And then as we go about our lives in the world, where do we encounter where it's, where it's lacking, where, it's fall, where, where the world is falling short of the promise of God? Where is, where is that? And then will we have the faith, the, the holy boldness, um, the, uh, maybe even, the, as I said before, the holy impatience of this woman to beg God to make his promised future a reality now? 
That's a big part of our, our kingdom of God work. Okay? Now, okay. That's the, that's the loftier stuff. The, I'll give you the lower, lower down stuff is, is John Vianney. I say John, you know, he, he understands that I say is the lower down stuff. He's a more, more practical, more practicable kind of thing. You know, I, I ripped John Vianney off a long time ago. I said, like, pray and love, right? This is, this is John Vianney. He says, the great duty of, of man, the great duty of the Christian is to pray and to love. That's him. I lifted it right from him. I, get, I, att- I gave him attribution the first time, and then the 6,000 times after that, I didn't because why? You know? <laughs> he's, the, he's the man, okay? So pray and love. But this is kingdom of God stuff. Pray, right? We have to be, in, he says, prayer is nothing other than communion with God. We're praying. We're giving our whole selves to God. We're receiving back from him his whole self, right? So that we can take on his vision. We can live into the kingdom, and we can be empowered to do so. I mean, it's prayer. But prayer is, a, is made, makes, it makes love effective, but it also affects love. And so prayer and love just, go, they simply go hand in hand. I mean, in the end, they're, they're one in the same movement, or they're, say, two sides of the same coin. Pray and love. And, and here, this is, this is how we're going to live out this holy impatience. We're going to live it out by praying and praying and praying and praying and then loving, just giving ourselves away totally in God's service to the people that he entrusts to our care, to the people who cross our path. So this is it. If, if we don't get the other about God's promised future now, then we can understand pray and love because that's, that's the way that it's going to happen. And more than the way that it's going to happen, that's the, that is the pattern of our lives. We have to live into that praying and loving reality. That is, that is in fact, a fully flourishing, a, a truly human life. And, and we're called to live uh, nothing short of that.